What is your definition of happiness? A clear horizon. Nothing to worry about. Only things that are creative. right in the office today man i guess it's like winter is truly over the sun is just going down way later what up chat so yeah i guess i'll start things off with a quick quick dab ski the first one of the day and get right into it shall we best dispensary in florida man i wish i knew uh water dragon i have no idea i haven't been to florida in so long it's definitely going to happen this year for sure. Like, I will be in Florida, probably be in SoFlo, probably be in Miami. Um, but I'm definitely coming through. Starting today, let me show you guys what I'm working with. This is, this is a strain called, what is it called? This is Grape Gas. This is coming from Wooksauce Winery. The smell on this is fucking incredible. I love it. First one of the day. I'm gonna start it off right. Just copped a 3D atomizer at a smoke shop. Is there any possibility it could be fake? Jerry, it's unlikely, but you could always check with Puffco support. Like you could send them pictures of the packaging, of you know the chamber itself. You can definitely do that. club i love the desert colorway so much it's so fire i need to get pieces that like look great in it i might have one on the way boom there we go listen you guys didn't come for beauty tips but this is how this beard stays looking fucking crispy so now you know now you know it's all on the brush it's all on the fucking brush all right now i look like i won't hate myself after this i'm sure you guys don't mind Admin is the best. He really is. Best at fucking stealing all my hash is what he's best at. Okay. All right, Admin. I just saw your text. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Carrie in here? Oh, there he is. What up, Carrie? Man, that fucking groovy money. I had to hit up groovy and pretty much beg to get a piece. Like, fucking Groovy gets everything they ever want from Puffco. And I had to find out through public information that there's a hat drop coming. And then I had to beg for a proxy for that. That drop is so sold out before it even dropped. Candace Stewart, <laughs> it's great to hear that um, that the ball cap made that big of a difference for you, but I think it shouldn't make that big of a difference, you know, like, is it a huge difference? Absolutely. Should it be the difference between loving it or hating it? I actually don't think so. I wonder what was going on before you had the ball cap. Groovy money, baby. <coughs> <clears throat> the most inside insider art club there is in the game. <clears throat> and just remember, if you post up to Earth Trade Center, no ops allowed. They were very clear on that on the ad. God, it's for friends only. For people that exude positive vibrations. 
Yeah, the Groovy Money hats are insane, man. They need to do like a real big public drop. I feel like Groovy Money needs to like do a drop that's like ships in four to eight weeks or something and just let everybody get one. You know, I take all those fucking orders because they got like so many fucking fans. <coughs> 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 no Tenski. No Tenski on the chat today. I, I mean, you know what? You might get a Tenski, but that's going to be split between me and. Thank you so much. That's going to be split between me and Frank. Frank is chiefing dabs, man. He's like. He's on his shit. Um, my Puffco recipe history is top notch. Recipe? You got to mean something else by that. All right. Well, yeah, I, that double proxy hit, I, I'm not doing that, bro. I'm I'm going to keep it a buck with you. I'm not doing that. Like, if I did do that, it would be the last dab that I took. Maybe Frank would be willing to do it, but I'm just going to be coughing my fucking ass off. It became so hard on that 10 ski live or stream of mine to just talk. Like, by the end... Like I remember just saying some shit. I'm like, why am I saying this? This is stupid. It's like really hard to stay focused and stay interesting. So I'm, I'm going to do my best. Yes, there is a hash review happening today. I'm going to do it with Frank. Frank is going to be here as we do it. A dub ski. Carrie, maybe if you're here, dog, when you're in town, we could hit a dub ski together. I'm going to need a lot of help for that. That's going to be like 15 on you and five on me. Um, okay. <laughs> Frank is more than the Mr. Peanut guy, man. Frank is a fucking incredible. Frank is like the Showtime comedy store special guy. He's the guy who like helped merge comedy and hash period. Mr. Peanut guy. I hear him laughing in the background probably cause he's fucking offended. He's been doing shit, man. Frank is like, that's not the first time Frank was on TV. Um, period. I really had to think about it too, Frank. I, in my mind, I was wondering if that was the first ever hash head on a Super Bowl ad, and it actually wasn't you. It was Abdullah? Abdullah was in like a TurboTax or some shit commercial last year. But listen, Frank is breaking new fucking ground, man. He's doing a ton of shit. Don't don't put him in a box. Don't put him in your fucking peanut box. He deserves bigger than that. Um. He's doing peaked podcast. He's doing a ton of shit, man. All right. All right, admin. I guess let's roll into these questions, man. Like, hopefully there's a good one or two. Admin did not. Yo, if you're in here every day, every day before I stream, at least a few hours before, I'm going to post up a little question box. And you can drop your questions in there. And admin goes and picks the best ones. He said today's were kind of weak. Like, lots of submissions for questions, but not very many good questions. Admin, this is what you started with, dog. No, homie, no. I'm trying, like, I think most people don't get, like, it's, it's hard. It's hard for me to get high and answer questions well and stay on track. I mean, like, let's see what will happen, but two proxies. Come on, man. Come on. It's too much. It's too much. That's all that extra shit. You got me out here like fucking live resin, no butter. You know, who's going to come here? How about this, admin? I will do the, the double proxy at the end if you come on screen and be the best friend wiping my forehead. If you come through with the bounties and wipe my head... We could talk. We're going to have to recreate that video, though. You know, like, I'm definitely going to have to boost it to keep going. But if you're not going to be out here supporting me, like Live Resin No Butter was supported in 2016, then I, I can't do it, dog. It takes a team. It takes a village. It takes a village to do things like this. Um, Big Mike Jacks asks, what up, Mike? Um, if I could only listen to one album for the rest of my life, what would it be? I mean, like, how miserable would that be? One album for the rest of my life. For the rest of my fucking life. Ugh. Ugh. God. I, like, when I thought about this, it's like, what album do I know in and out? And it's probably Notorious B.I.G. Ready to Die. 
like which is so crazy it's so old now like that's such an old head thing to say but ready to die is an album that i know like in and out i have so many memories attached to it you know like it was for me kind of a toss-up between that and reasonable doubt jay-z's first album but reasonable doubt just like as good as it was like man i listen to ready to die and i'm fucking charged up i know every single fucking lyric party and bullshit comes on no matter what i'm going through i'm having a good time and it's turning up the spice level for sure um get real zesty when when ready to die comes on but probably that you know like i i would never want to do one thing for the rest of my life i feel like i'd rather like almost have nothing um thoughts on the wu-tang album coming out in 80 years shannon i don't know i didn't hear about that i mean like very presumptuous that anyone is going to want to listen to wu-tang in 80 fucking years like it's hard to make an album and have somebody listen to it 15 years later i make like i walk around with astor club uh, this is a fucked up thing to say we obviously can't clip this but, like i walk around with astor club and astor club the the founder is my age and we have been in the same scene for a super long time but we never really met until much much like pretty much puffco was created when i met the owner of astor club and i didn't even recognize him until like i anyways a lot of the people we fuck with are like washed you know like they're fucking older cats i don't want to name all of them because we know some of them personally but yeah we're i don't know that anybody wants to hear that people gonna know who the fuck wu-tang is in god knows how long you know these kids these days are saying if you were born in the 1900s you're fucking old they're not wrong you know you were born in the year 2000 you're turning 23 this year like you're an adult that can vote and drink and smoke weed and fucking do a bunch of shit so i i don't know man all right let's see uh asap bergy asks is there any quality bho left in the rec market gray market i don't smoke enough of it to know uh bergy I just don't smoke enough of it to know. Like I, I brought out today. I busted it out today because I was like, if I got this, I need to smoke it. Like, what am I gonna do? Just hold this for a year or two until it's bad? I'm gonna smoke the shit out of this hardcore OG. But that's not available on the market yet, and they're working very hard to bring it to market. But like, it should come. It may never come. It was supposed to be out by now. I know the surprise, surprise, and Royal Key. I don't know if Royal Key is still doing BHO, but surprise, surprise might be. They're like sister companies. Um, and I trust that brand. I trust that brand a lot. I'm trying to think of like other BHO. And I don't know, is 710 Lab still doing BHO? They definitely were a few years ago. Um, but I would trust them if they made it. Um, I would probably trust West Coast Cure in general if they're making it. Like not to say everything they make is gonna be good. But I haven't I haven't tried anything um, outside of this in like a year and a half. Um, views for 2027. Ask, do we get another chance to attend PuffCon, or was that a one-time thing? You do get another chance, and this PuffCon. So PuffCon has been like a you know if you know you know not everybody is allowed. We caught a lot of shit because we were like if you have a proxy or a peak or a peak pro that's your ticket in and a lot of people are like bro i want to come but like i don't really want to buy a whole product to come like can i buy a plus and get in or can i just pay for a ticket can i give you fifty hundred dollars to get into puffcon we're like no homies fucking only if you're not down just say it you know like that's been our perspective it's definitely the wrong take because we need to reach new people so this year not only is it happening but there's a very good chance that this year we're going to open it up to people who are not Puffco customers, meaning that you could just show up. It won't be fully open to the public. We'll probably charge something to get those people in there. We might give plus ones to people who have a P something. We're going to figure something out. But it is happening this year. It's going to be bigger than last year, both in attendance, the amount of space that we're reserving and the site that we have. We have more space, I believe, that we're going to have access to um, and the amount of people coming through. So yeah not only is it happening but this is going to be the biggest one ever probably the best one to come to yet for sure okay where are we at 
I wish one day we'll do it on the East Coast, man. Like I, yo, I might as well say now. I went to straight Coney Island to Astroland. They don't call Astroland Astroland anymore. They call it Luna Park now, which oddly enough is the name of the housing complex across the street, which is actually where I grew up. And we went there like we're gonna shut this motherfucker down and throw a puff con. And boy, was that an expensive thought to have. Like, it did not make sense. Like, New York, one day, there will be a PuffCon there. It ain't this year. It probably ain't next year. But hopefully the year after. Like, let's see. Admin, that's it. Admin, you're out there fucking chuckling it up, bud. You're out there having a good old time laughing. You ain't you ain't in these. That's all the questions. That's all the questions, dog. I sent you like 80 fucking questions that were submitted. You got your fucking alliance going on. You're colluding with Frank to be like, nah, man, let me in, coach. Stop wasting time. I, I know your laugh, admin. I know your laugh very, very well. I feel like they could probably hear it on, on camera. All right. I mean, I guess we could just roll right into Frank. Why not? I mean... We could definitely spend a lot of time together, and I, I'm excited to see Frank. I'm just, I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm trying to push the Clippington agenda, admin. But I guess we could get a lot of clip, clips with Frank. Um, <clears throat> uh, the questions usually I post on my page beforehand, um, Rob. So like, you'll see a little questions tab in my story. But I don't know. We got to figure some other shit out to make it a little bit easier. You can also just ask in here. So. I'm going to tell y'all, if you have questions for Frank, drop it in the chat and admin will prioritize them as soon as we're done. I'm going to run a commercial break real quick. I'll be back shortly after. Let Frank get in here, get him nice and set up, get his things on the table. He brought his desert and his droplet. So be right back after this commercial break. Stay tuned. Does anyone have any drugs like Metamucil or Giga Biloba? Maybe some vitamin C, I have bad knees. I have a real small bladder. Is it okay if I cut in front of you guys real quick? Thank you so much. Oh, I'm sorry, my bad, I'm sorry. Back in my day, we had to rub two knives together to get high, you know? <laughs> ah, ah, fuck, ah! Can you, uh, help me pack this? No more. Oh, come on, don't treat me like I'm 90. Hey, man, I don't know, man. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, 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 hey. So do you know where any older women are? Any older women? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my fuck! Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to bump into you. My bad, no problem. Let's see. All right, Frank, I think we need you to scoot over a little bit. Let me. We're back. There we go. Okay, cool. The camera setup, I feel like, is very flattering. Like, I don't like, anytime I look at my FaceTime camera, I'm always like, what's happening to me? Yeah, no, but you got like a good, you got, it looks like you got like a sweet, like. I mean, they got like the lighting going and yeah, stuff. Yeah, you look, you got like that de-aging filter, you know what I mean? You look good. I feel like uh, when I first started, I was like, yo, man, I was talking to Grant and I'm like, bro, I'm looking real crusty on there. What's going on? It was just my face. Like, it was just <laughs> the way I looked accurately portrayed. And then they got this beautiful ass fucking lighting. That's always the tough one too. Is that uh, is it swapping on you? What? This, this a thing? little bit. Let me um get some tech support. Uh, this is like falling on him. 
I mean, I know that this is not Frank's first dab of the day for for no, sure. No, I'm, I think I'm, I was like, I. So usually my morning routine now is like I'll make my wife a cup of coffee. Uh, she'll go to work, and then I'll, like, do errands or just stuff I need to get done. And then I'll, like, try to take a dab by, like, 9, 30, 10. Um, in the morning. In the morning. And then I just – if I don't have anything too crazy, I'll, like, stream and play video games, and I'll smoke then. Or um, – What game are you yeah, playing? I'm playing NBA 2K23 uh, Stellaris, which is a very nerdy RTS uh, What's an you, RTS? I'm a real-time strategy game. You basically okay. build an alien empire from the ground up, and you explore like universes, and you like, you like. Is, is, is this like Factorio, like what Destiny plays? Sort of. Okay. It's more like it's really they they make fun of it because they say it's like a you're basically just playing through menus, and that's what a lot of it is. It's like mm. a lot of like micromanaging, like tons of different stuff, and then you can get into like wars and do like full fleet battles it's very nerdy i'm super yeah. nerdy when it comes to video games. the games i'm into are like so basic so like, i i love like i somehow fell back into the game portal oh amazing game that, that's a beautiful portal, game portal one and two and hilarious like, it's that's very funny. Go- it's so fucking good yeah got into that i played um entropy center which is an another- entropy is really good you played it yeah, yeah. you beat it damn no yeah. no i didn't beat it i i saw it and i read like a review of it but I, I, it, was, I, it was fun. It was the the game mechanics were super good, but the story was not as good yeah. as Portal. But it was still great. And now I'm on this Nintendo Switch game that's like beautiful called Inside. You ever heard? Of oh this? yeah, yeah, yes, I've heard of Inside. Have you tried Limbo? No. It's a it's a black and white, very like. Uh, I wonder if it's the same creators. Simple, simple game. Yeah. I'm gonna write that down. Limbo. I'm looking for sh- things to download. So when I'm on the plane. Limbo. Okay, great. Yeah, I I feel like I'm I'm just those games. That, one, I don't understand why anybody would tune in ever to watch a game like you're describing, like those menu games. People love it. Really, people watch. It's crazy to see the 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 amount of people that watch Twitch and the people that watch what games. Like, uh, okay. just like it. There's people that watch. I mean, there's the <laughs> channels called like Let's Chat that just blow, and it's people just talking, and it's like those get so many views. And are they there for you as a personality, or are they like there? I mean, obviously they're there for that, but are they actually into watching the gameplay? Um, I think so. Some people, but also I, it always reminds me of like when I was a kid and you had to wait a turn to play. Okay. Like, I still found it enjoyable to watch like sure. my cousins play and yeah. stuff. So like, I guess why that's still like a big thing. I enjoy it when I like like I hate games like Call of Duty mm-hmm. and Fortnite, get a ton of anxiety. And then the pressure of like a twelve year old shouting racial slurs at you. The whole thing for me is just bad news. I want mm. nothing to do with it. But I do enjoy when somebody's like streaming and playing it because they get to observe without the pressure. Yes, yes, which yes. is like why I think it's nice. But I can't play those games. Like no, I no, can't stream and play them at all. It's very tough. I remember, and I still play with my friends. And I remember we were playing once, and uh, you know you can get randoms that join your squad. And there was the squeakiest voice that joined, and this kid had to have been like thirteen. And okay. we immediately were going to kick him out, but he ended up being the better player on the whole team of course and it was yeah. just like it it made me feel a certain way as like a 30 year old man to be like i i've played video games my whole life yeah and you're and I'm getting and i'm getting washed by yeah a child. yeah it's like it, man how old are you again 33 you're 33 yeah. okay not super washed i'm turning 40 in like a month and a half but I, th- washed age not sure. real i mean but it's also like i always feel like now that i'm older it definitely feels like relative i don't know if it feels that's correct I, mean, I know a lot of people that are significantly more washed yeah. than i am but it's the age where it's like like when i think about being 16 like being 30 you're a fucking dinosaur i know you're like oh you old man you, you know, know like 40 old. 40's yeah. like okay gramps yeah and, and it's, now we're 30 and we're like I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm struggling. I'm struggling with like seeing a face in the mirror that is not like the young mind. Like mm-hmm. in my mind, I'm the same person that I've always Absolutely. been. Absolutely. But now you got like, I got like these yeah. things. Like the fuck is this? this I got is all like <laughs> puffy now and shit. I and... got too high the other day, and I remember looking at my hands and being like, "It's like they look like your father's hands." And I was like, "I gotta stop." No. Oh my god. I'm, I'm, way too high. I'm way too high for this. Jeez, no, I'm glad I didn't adopt some of my father's, like, styling in general. My dad, when I was super duper young, had a ball, like, you know, I got these genetics mm-hmm. from him, right? I'm bald yeah. as fuck. So, like, he was this level of bald. But when he was, he was younger than I am now. He's probably, like, 30, 
33 or 35. And when he was 33 or 35, that would have made me even younger. He was like 31. That would have made me 11 years old, right? He mm -hmm. had me, I think, when he was, yeah, when he was 20. And this dude was rocking bald hair, like mine, with a fucking ponytail. <laughs> 1990, what year was this? this Confidently? Was Did he pull it off? I mean, he was pulling it off. I mean, like, he's like a, you know, he's a Russian guy. So, like, he just had a, it was 94, man. Like, yeah. it was hot off the the 80s, I don't know, ponytail vibes. Yeah. But he, he made some You got a coworker that's got a ponytail? Who? Is this a coworker here that you have a coworker that has a ponytail? What's his name? I just blanked on his name. I just saw oh, is him it outside. Joel? Yeah. Yeah, Joel has long hair. Maybe he has a ponytail sometimes, but he's not bald. There's something about mm. like being and no hats. Like, oh yeah, bald with a ponytail is rough. bald with a ponytail is a look, you know? Like you're a rubber band away from a mullet at that point. <laughs> uh, anyways. Is it weird I like a mullet more than I like a ponytail? I mean, I feel like no, it's not, because I feel like a mullet typically is like comedic effect. Like you're doing it like I remember when I grew when I was 21, I saw a dude with a mustache, and I remember, like, losing my mind, like, dude, you're doing, like, it was such a weird thing to do, and I think it's perpetually like that, like, uh. to a 21-year-old, rocking a mustache is, yeah, hilarious. like, oh yeah. my god, dude, yeah. what are you doing, you look like my dad, type of yeah. vibe, and I think a mullet is done in the same thing, like, that dude didn't style a mustache to be like, this shit is fucking fire, bro. I'm bringing this back. <laughs> yeah. He did it because he's like, this is fucking hilarious, yeah. and it's a talking point, and I like it. Mo, it's the same thing, but a ponytail, it's not for comedic effect. No, certainly. it's like I'm here, I'm serious, and we're doing yoga. Like, it is very... It is pointed. It is a yoga move for sure. Let's, <laughs> let's get some jazz up. Yeah. Um, this is what I have out here. Well, one... Are you a recent dabber? When, like, what, when was your first dab? So my first dab was uh, my cousin. Uh, I'm giving gave, you some BHR right now that you will not regret. I like BHR. Okay. I don't mind it. Um, they were talking. You were talking about brands. Uh, when I was yep. watching outside, and there's a few that I, I do still appreciate BHR. JP is the one who really educates Shout out to me. JP. Yeah. yeah. He's the one who really educates me. And he me has probably stuff. the best BHO literally in the fucking world. Yeah, he's, he's real spot on with what uh, he, he recommends me and such. Oh, I actually packed that already. Oh, okay, Here, great. Me, I'll take me, this one, and I'll get yeah, you on the next one. Yeah, let me burn through this one. Um, first time I took a dab, my cousin uh, Michael was the one who took me. Uh, what year is this? Oh, God, I think this was maybe maybe like six, seven years ago. They, I, I didn't have to worry about, uh, okay, I, I, yeah, I skipped the knives and the, uh, the, the ball cap on the top. You know what, what was mean? the first thing you dabbed off? Do you remember what the nail was? Like the style? I think it might've been titanium. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Real crusty boy. Yeah. Cause they, I don't think he, he wasn't forking, fucking with quartz or anything yet. Sure. Like super nice. But I remember I took a fat dab and it was at like the spot where they were all blasting stuff like it was real you know classic okay, shit sure. um and uh we were oh, hanging they're blasting tubes you mean yeah <laughs> so you're torching up in a place yeah. where they're blasting yeah, tubes yeah. not not in the same room obviously you know what i mean they were you know but it's where the work got done. Uh, blasting out front dabs in the back yeah exactly um so we yeah i did that and uh i just remember getting ripped and having an absolute blast and then i had to drive home and then i just remember that drive home being like the coolest, <laughs> chillest drive I've ever had. And I okay. did the speed limit, and I was, like, attentive and cool and just chill. I mean, I'm not promoting driving and <laughs> doing dabs, but still, it was, like, nice. I was like, oh, this is cool. I mean, I wish there were signs around it. Like, I definitely, I, I can definitely be too high to drive. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Which used to, like, not happen to me at all. I got some bag of pieces right there. Oh, sick. Awesome. Shout out to these guys. Petty swabs, big shout out to them. Yep. But I think there's a, a certain level of high, again, not promoting driving while high at all. And it's really why I wish there was like some research around it because I feel like if you just take like one dab, again, don't do this. I'm advising against doing this. If you I'm take, a terrible influence. <laughs> if you take one dab, it's like, what are the dangers? Like you wait at a stop sign, like it's a red light for 40 minutes. <laughs> You're going to hit a bunch of fast food restaurants. <laughs> You're going to go three miles under the speed limit and piss everybody off on the highway like i think the the people that do smoke and drive which i i am actually against 
are still like you know a fraction of the danger of like drunk drivers. Anyways, I, so I'd put money on, I, I'd put money on uh, stone drivers over drunk drivers, any day. A thousand percent. I would. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I, man, drunks make me uncomfortable. Do you drink? <laughs> so I stopped drinking. I come from a family of drinkers, <laughs> but also working at a comedy club, and it's funny that my wife works in rehab. Um, she's a psychologist, so we talked about. Uh -huh. You mentioned that before. Yeah. <clears throat> so we talk about uh, alcoholism and all this stuff a lot, and uh, <clears throat> so I stopped drinking because I just mostly smoke weed now because it's just easier. But yeah, after working at a club and seeing drunk people all the time, <clears throat> you understand like I don't know, it's just not my vibe. But I'm surrounded by them all the time. How do you deal with that now? Because like I have the luxury of being in my own. Little world like PuffCon. PuffCon does not allow alcohol, and I like that. I it, like it intentionally. Like I, I listen. I if I go out to a fancy place with my friends to eat, I'm having a cocktail. Yeah, for sure. But I absolutely hate being around drunks, man. And when somebody's oh, yeah. like uh, half a foot away from my face and I feel their breath on me, and it's always a drunk, bro. Yeah, it's never a stoner that's breathing down your fucking neck. But a drunk is gonna come over. Try to give you like the dirtiest handshake. Talk right at your face. How do you like? Does that just not affect you now? Uh, it. I know how to. It's, it's, this is a fucked up thing. I know how to act around drunk people because I've been like raised by them, and I've like have like a family that drinks. Okay. But, but also being around the clubs, nightclub scene, especially, you get used to it. I also know how to like talk to them and handle them. Like, okay. I remember. Uh, uh, one okay, of the, let's just do a, a quick thing. Frank's tips for dealing with drunks in public. Please, I need advice. I need. Advice. I just treat them like childs. I okay. talk to them like they're a kid. I explain to them that they're not doing anything wrong. That it's just like, hey, you know, you can't do this or blah blah. Like I just talk to them like they're children, and like you really walk them through. A lot of it is like sometimes they're just super angry, or sometimes it's like this weird insecurity that happens. Sometimes okay. you'll get like a fun drunk where you're just like, hey man, we're we're just trying to chill, and they're like, oh okay. Okay. Especially working at a club like that and having to like kick drunk people out. Um, I remember being on stage and there was a guy that was just drunk and heckling. And I didn't like yell at him or like embarrass him in front of everybody. I was just like, I was like, uh, what did I say? I was like, oh, man. I was like, hey man, I get it. You're drunk. You're having fun. I was like, we got a bottle of water in the back with your name on it. And I was like, I'm not going to yell at you or anything. I know. Sure. I was like, I know how to talk to drunk people. I was like, you just treat them like children. And everyone just started dying laughing. Hell because yeah. I didn't like yeah. hurt him, or, but I definitely embarrassed him. And he was just so shook. He was just like, mm, and he like got up and left. But okay. the server came up to me and was like, I've never seen anyone handle it like that. He was like, you could have ripped him, did all this thing. But That's you just, usually what happens. You just scolded him like a child and he felt bad and then left. And I was like, yeah. Uh, ruin the show for everyone else? So like, I didn't even, that wasn't even my consideration is actually of the people that are, are, are watching you is actually like in the back room when you just have drunk friends. And I totally forgot about that, man. Yeah. People go there and get drunk as fuck and then feel like you're there to perform for them. Oh yeah. And they are just talking. Every time I see a clip on this, whether I'm just like scrolling through TikTok or maybe occasionally you'll, you'll post somebody just like ripping up a heckler real bad. But damn, I don't like, you have to have so much more patience than me. Like I've learned how to be calm in the face of like negativity being thrown at me. But there's something when like somebody's drunk or like who is this one woman? You see this video of a woman who is, I think she was a Jewish woman. I think was in Texas, and she, somebody was like, "Who'd you vote for?" Oh and yeah, then she threw a beer at her. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like they just made it of like I'm just watching this. Like who the fuck goes to a comedy club? to experience this and like yeah. is is it just the norm is there always every night somebody it's too drunk that makes the whole fucking evening about them well that always that 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 is a thing that sometimes happens in clubs you'll get that with like people that are like i'm offended or like i didn't like that joke um whereas like you know i'm i'm never upset when people get offended at things okay and i know that's like a weird stance to take as a comedian but it's like i, I understand so. when people get offended at things and i think they have a right to yeah it's like how much i care about them or how much i care about what they're offended at is like always varying degrees depending on how i feel right so like if i'm on stage and i say something that usually always gets a laugh and then one lady who's drunk is like i don't like that and then she starts ruining the show then i'm like well i don't care you know what i mean sure but if like someone comes up to me after the show and they're like i actually 
you know, like this is how I feel. I'm just like, all right, well, what is it? And then sometimes mm -hmm. I make a good point and I'm like, oh, okay. Well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll write it a little bit better or like I'll tweak something. Do um, you feel like, I'm just like, hi now again. I have like no agenda. I have no, I have no, I have no fucking, like, <laughs> no to anything. But like, there's so much conversation. I mean, like, listen, you, I've, I've seen a good amount of your sets. You've definitely saw things where I'm like, oh, damn, come on, Frank, do better. Like, absolutely, my, absolutely. Yeah, but yeah. I'm not, I also feel like comedy is a forum for like working out thoughts. And I feel like, Listen, man, sometimes people take you on a fucking journey, like Jesselnik. Mm -hmm. I saw Jesselnik at the one night that I yeah. came to see you, and he just starts off with some supercharged shit. Yeah, dude. And you let him walk you through it, and by the end, you're like, you're grateful for like the edge. It was like, it was a comedic edging yeah, yeah. in a way for him. Like, he's pushing you right there, and then ultimately it's okay. And I think different people have different comfort levels yeah. of where you push them. But, like, do you feel like there's actually, like, a line in comedy? There was somebody who performed at um, the comedy store drive-in thing. Mm -hmm. I loved all the acts. But there was one guy who performed. I was familiar with him as an actor, but not, not as a comedian. And he said... Yeah, now I'm going to be like, I got to know who to I'll tell you after. Yeah, yeah. But he said some shit that was like, like he was making a joke about like football players. And then, like, that turned into a judgment on, like, a group of people that happened to make up a good part of like football and Peruvians. It, uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you got me too. I'm fucking hot. <laughs> and it was just like, so like, damn dog, that wasn't like the punchline was racism. Like I was just like, okay. Well, so a lot of that is, and this is where like, and this is like when it comes to like a student, like I don't want to say student in comedy. God, I sound like a, a, such a prude. No, it's true. Um, you are. You literally yeah, yeah. a student who's like, yeah. Anyway. So when I so when it comes to like the store and like whether or not PC is like a big thing is like I always think of it like this: like PC culture is culture. That's just a thing you now have sure. to deal with. Right? Yeah, of course. So it just means that we all have to be better at writing and be operating at a higher level of comedy in the sense of like stuff like that. That's like old school. You know what I mean? You look also sure. the age of the person. It's kind of like an old way of thinking. That's fair. Yeah. Whereas like I try, I, I do my best to not be caught dead doing dumb, hacky stuff like that. Not sure. Not dumb, hacky stuff like that. I shouldn't say that. Just if I'm going to make a joke about race or anything like that, it's got to be from a place that I know is true and better and like not something that's an easy out. You know sure. Because I mean? this thing I see a lot too, and this is what bugs me. Is like I'll see comics, like older comics too. They'll just be like, "You can't talk about this," or blah blah blah, or like PC culture. And it's like, well, by you saying that, you now get all the people who believe that just automatically on your side. Sure. So in a sense, whatever you say next is going to be good, even if it's a little yeah. edgy. Where it's like, just do the joke. Like my jokes. I mean, you've seen my. I have a yeah. I have a school shooting bit. I got a yes. cat's licking my nipples bit. I got <laughs> yeah. You know, I got like so many ridiculous stuff. Sure. But it's also this understanding of like what I say on stage. It's also just an agreement that like we're all just trying to. I'm I'm here to say ridiculous funny things. Sure. You're either gonna laugh or you're not. And Patrice O'Neill said it best. He was oh, like Patrice was like reflecting on he Patrice. Was, dude, he was my fa He was my favorite. But he said he goes he goes the audience that never should be a hundred percent of the audience loving you. You shouldn't walk into a room mm. and everyone there is just praising you. He was like it should be fifty fifty. 50% people that love you, 50% people that are that terrified or just horrified. Sure, yeah. Right? I mean, Patrice definitely was doing that. And that's the thing. That's the thing I loved about him, too. Because, yeah, you know, and don't give me, and trust me, like, the, me and comics, we talk all the time. was like, that's why, like, a Sebastian, who's a hilarious comic, sells out theaters everywhere. Okay. Like, crushes. He's so popular. He's even said it himself. He was like, I like going to the store or these other clubs. And because they're not all my audiences, mm. so they make me work, and I get a realistic, inter like a realistic uh, gauge of my jokes. Because I know if I go in front of these theaters surrounded by my fans, mm. they're just gonna love whatever I say, and I won't. You know. So at what at what point is it like? Because listen, everybody, I think throughout my life, I've heard like you just can't do this kind of stuff anymore, and it's like, yeah, man, like that's always the case. Like that's I, always the case. It's always evolving, and it's always like when they say like we couldn't cre recreate the office in today's environment. Yeah, for sure. But there's something being made today yeah. that in 20 years is going to be looked at as like, oh, you can't do that shit. Yeah, anymore. it's yeah. fucked up. Yeah, but you always got to be doing. I mean, you, you look at everything you've gone through with this. It's like, 
if you listen to anyone telling you you can't do that, you know what I mean? Sure. You wouldn't yeah. have like all of this. This was in reverse. This was something that totally you weren't allowed to do yeah, in one yeah, yeah. way, and now it's like totally chill that yeah, I'm yeah. out here just smoking hash with you. Absolutely. Do you think that there's like a line? Again, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of comedy. So yeah, yeah. Come here for comedy. So no, no, absolutely. I love it. But is there like a line of, you know, you're outdated or you're Patrice walking that path of like, where is the tension? Where is like the limit of where I can mm -hmm. push it and still get a smile, or it's just like in bad taste? Because I feel like some comedians that I've cherished throughout my life have ultimately, it feels like they're lazy. Yeah. Like it's like, no, it's not that you can't say those things anymore, it's that you have to keep evolving and you've decided you're at the point where you no longer want to. Is that, I mean, is that just like. No, I think comic, comics or? definitely get older. Comics definitely either stop writing or they like. Or they just, yeah, they do in a sense get lazy. But also, it's also this weird thing of like, certain people go through different journeys in Hollywood. And certain things that happen to them shape them in a certain way. So when things start to almost like happen again, like you understand why they act the way they act. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Damn. I mean... Anyways, cool. Sorry. Anytime I get to... No, nah, man, dude. I, I, This is the stuff I live for. I love talking about stuff like this. Yeah, it's... I mean, I've been a comedy fan, like, fuck, since I can mm -hmm. remember. Like, I've just always watched it. And I'm always so curious. And, like, I'm sure you were as well. And, like, mm -hmm. you're in this world now. And I'm just, like, a spectator in that world. Like, I just watch from afar. I well, I mean, I still very much feel like a spectator <laughs> in comedy. Even though I do it, like, I still love watching it. Like, I'll go to the store and I'll sit and I'll just watch the show. Cause I still love watching comedy so much and I still enjoy watching like young comics and like comics that I think are doing great and really, really funny. Mm. And there's also comics that I'm just like, mm, all right, you know, and whatever, a little bit of a pivot here, but like you are a content creator now, like so much different shit that you do. What content do you consume? What content do I consume? Yeah, like what oh you man, to? cat videos. A lot of cat videos. TikTok is that like? I mean, I try to stay away from TikTok, but yeah, Reels only because yeah, it's so addicting. But Reels uh, for sure. My Reels is a lot of like, a lot of cat stuff. Okay. Uh, a lot of ridiculous, uh, funny videos, um, of just like, like I love Who's Gone Wild. Like I Who's Gone Wild I, is, and I've met him. He's a great dude. Is he? You yeah. met Little Mister E? Mm -hmm. Damn, I'm yeah. fucking jealous. Yeah, yeah. That that whole page. I also gotta watch what I say next because I'm also just like, uh, I gotta make yeah. Yeah, no, there's like <laughs> he's he's, he's obviously a, anonymous, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I know a few people that have met him or 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 know him or claim to know him, mm -hmm. but that page is like, it's so it's on the edge of like I'm like yo, am I allowed to be consuming this? Because I'm, I'm a New Yorker as well, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I moved here and I saw this page and I was like. I ain't never seen shit like this. Yeah, in my dude, life. you're getting a direct tap to the it, culture. That, that's it is like so one of the fun. first pages I followed when I moved here, and now it's just like they. He posted today that uh, some dancer, I think his name was like Caleb or something, and he was playing a Vanilla Ice song that he was dancing to, and he redid it <laughs> with the <a> little <laughs> Mr. E version. And I just, I, what did he post yesterday? It was it was some dude walking on the edge, like on a pipe uh -huh. or something. And the copy is just, anyways, Foo's Gone Wild. Uh, it's a very weird endorsement to make, but like it feels well, he's, like a movement. He's also very cool because he also does give back to the community. I don't know if you saw in San Diego, there was the food vendors that uh, were getting like picked up. Attacked, on yeah. He by those San Diego the girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he came down and then uh, did a, um, he calls them like, vendor buyouts so he'll go and he'll have a basically a big party by this vendor so they just sell and they just shit. sell yeah. everything out Hell and then yeah. like but most of the time it's like they just get donations and a lot of cool stuff and the community comes out That's and like it. really takes care of like he's done that a few times he's a pretty cool dude yeah foos gone wild is I, I can i consume a lot of like out of all the things that come across my feed it'll be the one thing that gets like burned in or like the guaranteed oh, yeah. like laugh or something for the day and again i'm very far away from the culture so for me i'm always like oh yeah. man i hope like i'm allowed to be in on this joke yeah, man. anyways yeah i failed mean? a sock check if you don't know what that is here let me get on that so oh he, no a sock check you you let's do it yeah no yeah. i mean you got your travis on yeah. oh no i'm failing my sock check today no no you, you're all up no yeah, you're up. no no you're this up. is a failed sock check no that's man. all the way up. you're up it's up but like it's supposed to be oh uh, yeah obviously and i usually up, have yeah. like my trappist designs yeah. nike I, socks these, these are actually trappists if you pull those way up man yeah those are are those the short ones yeah if you tuck if you tuck those all the way up you'll be all right yeah 
Anyways, yeah, big big shout out to Foo's Gone Wild, yeah. man. I That's... failed it, and uh, he put it on his on his Instagram stories, and my whole no family texted way. me. My I had cousins, I had aunts, being like, "How could you do this to us? You wow. misrepresented the family. We're never gonna live this down." It was so funny. Damn, I, I feel fucked up now. I think I I have to always be ready. It'll probably never happen. Yeah. But I always have to be ready for just the in case, track. man. So like, you know, if you if you don't follow this, which I'm I'm guessing you all know, but like the hot. What is it? The higher the sock, higher the, the sock, the, the down of the food. Yeah. yeah. So like, you know, you got to you got to keep it all the way up and just be ready for that. So, um, yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Let me I'll break this off for you I'll give you a nice little chunk. Oh, yeah. Why don't you hit this one in your droplet? Okay. I just feel like it's. I don't know. I feel like it'll it'll do right by you. Are we only on three? All right. We can, we can this guy. Okay. And I said uh, when I was outside, I'll, I'll hit both uh, proxies. You'll do that? Okay, I'll great. Do, do great. I'm like, I feel like I'm pulling on this like it's such a long time ago. Yeah, the old snap and pulls? Yeah. Oop, there it goes. It'll make its way down. Man, super cool. Any other content? Any other like long form shit? That um, you do? I try to watch TV with my wife, so we'll try to we we will try to start shows together, and then like watch them. Um, but we usually go through. I mean, classics, The Office. We watch all of the Marvel Universe stuff. We watch all okay. the, like Star Wars stuff, Mandalorian. Um, I haven't, I haven't started The Last of Us yet, but I won't. me neither. I'm saving it's it until it's done. Yeah. I want to. Yeah, I want to. I'm, I'm the worst when it comes to that. Yeah, huge, I want to binge huge, it. Ha uh, uh, huge uh, Game of Thrones fans. So. Okay. Uh, Sick. Damn, that hardcore smells so good. I'm going to load myself up and down and as well. And I do love trash reality TV. Ooh, what's your oh favorite trash? I, so, I... Have you heard of Milf Island? Dog, you're on like... You're on. You're in the Kevin Puffco world of reality TV. Kevin is watching like TLC shows about like, you know... Just the most fucked up shit. What I don't even want to find an ass. What's Mil what's Milf Island? So Milf Island is it's an island of milfs, and they're all dating younger men, and all the younger guys are uh, the sons of the moms, but they don't know each other. Hold on. So they're separating all of the all of the wives and the sons, but they're letting the 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 or the moms rather. <laughs> So it's all the moms, and they have yeah. kids, and all the kids are trying to fuck the other moms. And do they know that? <laughs> they don't know who's who, but they know they do know. They they're on the premise. The moms know. They don't know that they don't know who's mom's who, but there's but they I mean, but they kind of do. Now, now the store now the show is like oh, getting damn. off the rails because now they like because they've oh changed the rules. They've done so many different things, but this is like. Like they're like fights will break out because be like this dude's trying to ski my mom. Like it's a whole thing. It's very very oh funny. Oh my god! It is. Is this a TLC show? Like, I, no. yeah, it's like the Learning Channel. You know what I mean? Yeah, the Learning <laughs> it's like Channel. Like Lifetime or some yeah. shit. Yeah. Welcome to fucking America. <laughs> and then um my, look, oh, sorry, this the, is yours. That's the com the comic we had on the podcast on my podcast peaked uh, last Ashley Ray, very funny comic, loves TV, does a podcast about it. But she will tell me all like tons of trash TV shows that she loves watching. And uh, she was talking about this one called uh, Frogging, A Stranger Living Inside. And it's about people that live in the crawl spaces of other people's houses and they don't know about it. No. I swear to God. It, there's like eight episodes and it is scary and terrifying. Like the worst stories you've ever heard. Like there was like. And it's called Frogging? It's like, called Frogging, uh, A Stranger Inside, I think is what the series called. It's on YouTube. You can like order it and stuff. And this is normal? Like where is this happening? Is this just like. No, no, no. It's happening all over. Like it's. Cra there's like so many stories you're blown away. But like one of the stories was about like. Uh, it was like a. Uh, it was like a couple. It was like a family. And they were just like. They found out this guy was like living in a crawl space, like in between the walls of their apartment. Or I think it might have been the house. But they didn't know until like they'd set up cameras. Cause they'd leave and they'd like. Blankets would be like weird or like stuff would be gone or moved out of place. And then they like looked on the cameras and there was like a dude just walking around, just like in their blankets and shit. Oh my God. Terrifying, right? Terrifying. And this is a thing. Enough so that this they is have episodes thing. and people. Yeah. They had like 10 episodes. Crazy. Yeah, man. That's fucked up. Milk yeah. Island and frogging. <laughs> yeah, I, no. I, I, I might. I, I, I kind of want both of it. It's saying that Frank's mic is off. Oh, is is that true? Uh, it's back. It's back? Oh, okay, okay cool, cool. cool. Uh, 
Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 well. I like a good. Uh, what 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 do you? Uh, is there any like trash um, TV you watch? I, well, like trash TV, my favorites. <laughs> like I, my favorite reality TV show that I probably ever watched. This is gonna be pretty cringe is mob wives no i love it dude are you kidding me all that wife shit is like i just are you ah, i just love it it was like but it was <laughs> it felt like a time before <coughs> things were all fully scripted oh yeah like everything is scripted now yeah but at that time like these were really women who were you know married to guys who were in jail yeah <laughs> and they were like going through a big ange R.I.P. Big Ange. My lady's probably not watching this, but like she's dying laughing as she is. I just got like hella into it. I couldn't believe it. And I'm very. <coughs> There's like a trashy type of person specific to every area, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh like, yeah. yeah. I think like Staten Island is like generally like no knocks if you're from Staten Island, but you know, you're the worst borough. Like there's no debate about that. It's, <laughs> it's no, it's like, I mean, it's not Bronx, right? Like big puns from the Bronx. I mean, I guess Wu-Tang is from Staten Island. So you have that, but that's about all you have, right? And like, it is a very, like when you, when you hear people from Staten Island talk, it can sound very much like a Jersey jerk off. Or a Long Island jerk off. And again, if you're from New York, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to be offensive. I might have fallen into that stereotype as like a little bit of a younger man. No, and I, I get it. When I go to the Bay Area, I am absolutely a Bay Area stereotype. I say hella. I fucking throw an orange sauce at people. You know, like, wait, wait, wait. wait. You do what? You throw an orange what? <laughs> orange sauce. It's a, very, it's a specific kind of sauce they have at uh, <laughs> two Mexican restaurants in San Jose. <laughs> And and that's known. Like if you say orange sauce and you're from the Bay Area, people know what that is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, some people might tell you San Jose is not part of the Bay because it's a whole argument. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Orange sauce is. Like Anyways, yeah, mob wives. It was just like the exact type of people where I'm like, this is great. It's like I feel like I'm like at a dog fight or something really fucked mm -hmm. up, but I'm like not sucked into the bad situation. Because if you're in New York, you see like. People like that running around all the time, arguing and just doing crazy stuff. And you never want to get too close to like, shit, you don't even want to pull your phone out because you might get into a fight. Um, but anyways, all right, let's take a quick commercial break. Um, you garbage. That's what, that's one of my favorite is, um, uh, Real Housewives of New Jersey. Everything is really centered around like uh, this Northeast stereotypical, whatever type of people from there. And there is a scene that I show everyone and it's, in Real Housewives of New Jersey, where like the son's just running around, and he's like, Pa, Pa, and he's like, You garbage, you're my father. I, I go, <laughs> it's like, and it's genuine. Like, you're yeah, looking yeah. at me, like, these, these people are not faking this. This yeah, is yeah, yeah. This real, is and I'm there with them. Yeah. And, anyways, that is trauma happening. It's silly. This is like probably the weirdest combo that I've had on stream, but in a great way. Um, I'm going to do a quick commercial break. And uh, after that, I guess we'll get into the Super Bowl story. And oh, yeah, the roast. Cool. There's some, some motherfucker said you're the peanut guy, Mr. But, peanut guy. But also, that, that also made me laugh so hard how much you defended me. And I was dying laughing. Because also, like, that doesn't, like, offend me when people are like, you know, Mr. the peanut guy. It's like, that's cool. I mean, for sure. If people recognized you from that campaign, that would be cool. But, I, you know, I feel like it's, you know. Anyways. I mean, I've gotten much worse things said to me. <coughs> um, my, uh, I'll save it for when we come back. But I, one of my favorite, I, they're like. Go ahead. Give the story now. It's okay. They're always like, don't read the comments. I read every single comment. Um, Under the, the YouTube like, th this YouTube yeah. right here. So someone on the YouTube comment, it's so funny. They go, um, who invited the dolphin? And they hit a timestamp, and I clicked it, and it was my section of the video, and I could not stop laughing. They called you a dolphin? They called me a dolphin. And I'd never, ever heard, I've gotten Mr. Potato Head, I've gotten so many things, and I can appreciate a good, like, insult, or, like, roast. I mean, fuck it, let's just get into this. I have, I have the web right here, and I want to play this, but more than playing this, I want to go to the comments, <laughs> and I want to go through that with you. Let's see. Okay, I guess we got to take a quick commercial break. And then after this, I can't do this for myself. I love to go through my own shitty comments and roast people. I don't have that luxury because I have to just 
people get to tell me do better and I just got to be like, you're right, I'm going to do my best. <laughs> but like, people can tell you that I make, fuck you, dog. Like, yeah. I'm going to tear you apart. So yeah, let's go through some internet comments right after this. 231,000 views. How many comments, where, where are the comments here? Do you see them? On the, uh... scroll, down. scroll down. I mean, I see like more of that. I feel like such an old man that I can't find the fucking comment section. This is this is this is forty. This is what forty looks like. All right, commercial break, <laughs> and then I'm gonna figure out uh, how to go through the comments with Frank. Be right back. Drugs like Metamucil or Giga Biloba, maybe some vitamin C. I have bad knees. I have a real small bladder. Is it okay if I cut in front of you guys real quick? Thank you so much. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. I'm sorry. Back in my day, we had to rub two knives together to get high, you know? <laughs> ah, ah, fuck, ah! Can you, uh, help me pack this? No more oh, come on, don't treat me like I'm 90. Hey, man, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, 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 hey. Sir, do you know where any older women are? Any older women? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my fuck! Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to bump into you. My bad, no problem. find the comments oh great okay you got me in life oh yeah let's get you another dab for now while this is is there one in there already no there's not you already got that one yeah i, I put one in there yeah, yeah. we're at six now why does it say four we were way higher than four we're definitely at least six i'm pretty sure check oh test, test. Test, 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 test. Frank, check, check, check. Check, 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 check. Just some technical issues. Bum, 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 bum. Can you? Can they hear me? Yeah, no, they can. Oh, okay. I think it sounds good in the chat. Check, check, check. Hey, ba da pa bum bum. Yeah, hey, I see it. All right. Yeah, all right, cool. So, what the fuck is Pusha T? Pusha T? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, the yeah, yeah. That came up with that. Yo, how cool is that? Blew my mind. Yeah. It blew my mind of like, he did that, and then I believe he. He, he did another one. He did Arby's, I mm -hmm. think. But he got that check from Arby's. Mm -hmm. I think he only got like a whatever. Small amount for what it's done for the brand from McDonald's, but Arby's, I think he got that. Book. Yeah, because it was like they, they were like, you can write the write us a, a like a like a diss song to McDonald's, and then he wrote the two things, and then like they paid him a lot. It wasn't like a diss song, but it was like I don't remember what was the Arby's thing. It was uh, I don't know if it was Arby's, but because he had did the he had written a jingle right, and yeah. that was like younger in his career, 
And then I think the other i think it was like the other fast food brand was like we want you to write two more for us and then he did and one of them was i think making fun of mcdonald's okay yeah. or Man, not making, i need the admin the we need the like, we need the why this sandwich lore. is better than this yeah it's pretty pretty sick um all right great um can i get the is this ready cool let me see if i could find these comments man what's going on what's going on with youtube oh my god you still have this I just busted it out the freezer. Oh my god! Yeah, enjoy some, please. That's wild. Um, I mean, what do I this do? This is here? insane. I'm gonna need the chat's help, really. Yeah, that was so good. What the fuck is like? Where is the comments? I These are all, all suggested. All is is it all the way down? Yeah, it is. Okay, great. I'm just an old ass man. <laughs> All right, I think we. I haven't even. I haven't even fully seen this yet. If I'm being real, I think we need the uncensored version of this. I want the spicy comments. They're weird to like sort by yeah, sort by spiciest. Hilarious. A lot of the complaints were just people being like, "This isn't a real roast. This isn't like, this isn't like they used to do back then." It's like, yeah, of course, it's the Super Bowl. It's I corporate. I don't, yeah, I know, right? People mm -hmm. are so engaged too. I don't like this for some reason. I think it's because I respect Mr. <laughs> Peanut in my heart. <laughs> this is awkward. Not going to lie. This is much better than expected. Yeah. Smart and hilarious. Yeah, a lot of it was like, it was a lot of like, the people that didn't like it were like, eh, I just don't like it. It's like, all right, whatever. Cringe as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> Fuck you. you You're cringe. disliking it. Uh, brilliant so job, Planters. <laughs> um, could have made a busting of fat nut joke. And I did. You did. Of course yeah. I did. Hold on. Where is that? Down. You got to watch the video, dog. You can't just no, be no, 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 no. That. that was the thing is like the like I couldn't do that. Right. So and the, but the whole reason was like the other good point about it was like it was like we got paid to like write for a yeah, for commercial a that's going to yeah. be on national tv for so the most like, triggered audience in the fucking so world. it's like you know yeah. so i wrote like six pages and but i also wrote a bunch of stuff that i knew was like uh you know i was like this is what they might this is this is what's probably gonna get on sure all the fucking crazy stuff i'm saying about all these other people you know whatever it's probably not gonna like they're not damn they, but they were like you can't you know it's like stuff like you know you can't make fun of like you can't say these things in the sense of like other brands or like celebrities or blah blah blah. So it was like having to write. How'd you get it? How like how'd you get this gig? Oh, uh, uh, so I was recommended by Neil Brennan and Ross. So what That's happened big. was so Neil Brennan directs commercials. He's like you know he. He's a director. Did not know that. Yeah. So that's also like cool as shit. And he's also one of those guys that's like, he like, you know, he won't tell people, but he'll like, when they ask for like suggestions or recommendations on like people to be in commercials, he'll recommend comics and he'll recommend okay. like everybody. And that's great. You know, you'll still go in and have to audition and stuff, but it's just like a guy like that recommending people like that's so cool. Sure. Because then like on the off chance it hits like this one, you know, yeah. it, it's fucking life changing. So like yeah he they so he was the director of that yeah and they came to I think it was yeah. Varner Media um, Gary Vanderchuk's uh, media company that's what it came through so they they do like um, they'll do like campaigns for certain brands and then they have a full media company so it's like shoot us either a piece of content or like a commercial in a sense which that was but it's also like a piece of content that lives and breathes like it's a YouTube roast you know what I mean Damn. now it's its own thing but it's also like like those are people that came from the commercial to what and now that it's almost like a deeper thing of marketing you know what i mean yeah what's the i think it's 130 140 20 me oh okay yeah all right fine let's watch let's watch the video oh hilarious. is this i guess how many views 231,000. Yeah, yeah. okay 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 all right, I guess we'll just watch this. Is the whole the whole eleven minutes the to you? Whole, no, Jesus, no. I'm I think I'm like three forty five. Okay, yeah. All right, let's try this. You don't have to watch the full thing, but this no, is no. just kind of the. You're at three forty five. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's just get right to it. Peanuts are made of peanuts are made of healthy fats. <laughs> see Natasha, but if she's here, who's getting outsmarted by all those Dalmatians? Wow. 
You know, Planner's Peanuts are a lot like any movie Jeff Ross is in. Free on airplanes. <laughs> and now the man of the hour, Mr. Peanut. I think we can all agree there's rich, and then there's haven't worn pants in a hundred years rich. Oh my Mr. God. Peanut, what are you wearing? Why do you always look like you came from a jazz recital? Mr. Peanut, it's been fun roasting you, but I do have to get serious. I don't want to say your wife cheats on you, but your son is an almond. Wow. I know, right? That's the only, like, dirty joke that they kind of really did. But there's also just so many other things that were just like, there were so many things they cut. We also couldn't, like, make fun of each other too much. Yeah, you know I, mean? I could. Yeah, like, Natasha Leggero got the literal Disney joke. Yeah, she dude. got a literal Disney joke. Damn, I mean, super cool. Right, let's see the and comments. Leggero had like, <coughs> dude, I had to follow her. <coughs> dude, she's insane. <coughs> she had like a ten minute set. It was so fucking funny, dude. And the fact that they didn't do it. Was in that they didn't put the full thing on was insane. She had like, like a hilarious Harvey Weinstein joke about like on the Mr. Peanut set. It was so great. Dude. Oh my god! <laughs> but they, of course they didn't do it. You know. Damn. <laughs> Damn. I mean a Harvey Weinstein joke. Okay, yeah, that's that's not. It was pretty great, dog. But that's cool. You guys like I guess just got to go up there and like probably have a certain amount of things that you knew are very likely to hit they gave us dump out fucked up shit they gave us like three five minutes and then they just cut around it so i just did so i did like all the i did like the heavy jokes i knew were gonna make the people in the audience laugh and then i did like the jeff i was like this is this is the stuff that might make it me and and my friend uh doug fager we both helped write on this it was so tough dude it was so tough it was like trying to hit a bullseye because it was like it's easy to write roast jokes Mm mm-hmm when you have to roast someone, but when you have like stipulations like that, and it is for a for a big brand, like yeah, it's it's not easy. I mean, shit, like it's got to be the hardest, especially because it's like, I mean, do you get a lot of gigs like that where you have to like write comedy for clean situations? Absolutely. Well, for clean situations, yes, I do get a lot of gigs where I'll have to write, I'll have to just write for whatever the situation is, or like you'll have to like learn stuff about people or like the brand or whatever and then have to write or like i've come up with uh, ideas for like sketches and commercials and stuff i like being a creative person okay so like i and i know how to be in a in a room like a creative room so like i can um you put me in somewhere i can either like make it better help make it clear um trim edit stuff like that like that was you know, coming up at the store and then being a part of Roast Battle and writing all that stuff. This is all stuff like you had to like teach yourself and like learn. And it was like being in a writer's room because then when you finally go into a writer's room, you're like, oh, this is like a steep learning curve. It, well, how? Like, how is it? So it's like all the shows you watch are like writers or like written, obviously. So when you like write something like a sitcom, like everyone, they'll have like the major episode points, right? Or mm-hmm. they'll have... um Depending on the writer's room, they'll have full story breakdowns of how they like, you know, storyline A, storyline B, storyline C, blah, 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 and they put them together. But most people, what they'll do is they'll all write an individual episode, and then they'll bring it to the table, and they'll all read it, and then they'll cut and paste things from all the different scripts and then build a full, right? So do you have to know the flow of how they like to work together? Is that where it gets That's weird? also tough, too, because uh, it's, yeah, it's like if you're the youngest one in the room or if you're like even stuff of like... You're just a comic, but you're not like a traditional writer in a sense of like you didn't, you know, you're not like a writer. Like all these people, all these people are writers. They write. This is what they do. But it's like (laughs) there's is that like weird like friction between the two. Damn. I mean, chat, do you guys have any? uh... (coughs) God damn, it was a great (laughs) dad. It's so funny that you were like, it's tough to get high and then continue (coughs) and then talk because it's like I totally know what that feels like. It's. It is tough. I mean, they want to see you get as high as possible. Of course. But I think they, what they really want is an interesting show. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I guess that'll be like. Oh, shit. We still have a whole hash review. Yeah, dog. We're just hanging out. Yeah, I can. Uh, oh, yeah. We still got time. I'll get to the hash review in a second. Like, what I'd love to hear is 
your perspective on like the cannabis community because oh. you've hit some weird fractals you know like, <laughs> you're like in you know like you know sour waves yeah. um you know a lot of people that like are out there talking that shit there's it just I, what are you looking for uh, one more swap please oh of course yeah I'll give you um that. yeah like what's your take on like i mean you're in a very specific part of the space too you know like you're you're around the heady boys i feel like yeah. quite a bit um yeah, what's your take, man? Like uh, I think it was just, uh, I've always just been a big stoner, and I've always loved the weed community, and I think, um, you know, being a, a stand-up and all that, you know, I've been able to meet a lot of cool people, um, but I also just love the community. Like, even if I wasn't a stand-up or any of this stuff, like, I still would be this guy that would show up to these things because I love sure. stuff like this, right? Yeah. Um, and also, it's <laughs> funny that, like... I wouldn't like whenever people call me like a weed influence or anything. I'm I'm very quick to be like I'm a stand up that likes weed. You know sure. Because I, mean? I don't want to be like uh, <coughs> even you know I don't I don't know. I just a stand up that likes to. Yeah. No. That, that I think that's the way that's the way the relationship feels with yeah, like yeah. everyone I know that knows you like Ted from Alien Labs and just like the plethora of other people. Everyone fucks with you because you're a comic. They appreciate that like you live the life and you promote their brands. But I feel like it's. It's it's more of like a celebrity fan. I don't know, almost like when two artists fuck with each other. Yeah. You know, where it's not like I do this because like Ted gave me something for free or Roger no, 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 gave no, no. You do it because you genuinely fuck with it and you're getting it because they genuinely fuck yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Ted played Magic the Gathering. Like I'm not doing that no with way. other people. No you know way. I mean? Ted yeah. is a nerd. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Ted is yeah, a yeah. big Yeah, dude. Like we in the like, best I, way possible. Yeah, I bonded with that guy. You know what I mean? Like it, and there's different relationships I have with people where it's like Oh, we are friends first, and you know, and uh, yeah, it's it is like this artist thing where it's like I don't tr like yeah, I respect people because of the art and the stuff that they do. You know what I mean? Because sure. I do think like in the weed scene, like growing all that stuff, it is an art. Like the flower, all this, this is like this is art. So I can appreciate everything that goes into it. What are like if if you would say our space, our space, our like community has some growing to do. Where would it be? <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to pull oh, this man. out of you because I know Jesus you have some good, like some good. I mean, I do. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. You listen, Frank. I gotta shoot for some clips here, dog. We gotta oh, keep it a God. little spicy. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, this is such a funny thing because it's like if you if you hang out with me when like I would I, it, you've you've seen me like crack jokes yes. about people and stuff where it's like you know I think. Um, I think I just think weed influencers are really weird, but also I think influencers in general are weird. Okay. So like I think there is uh, there's certain people in the scene where it's like uh, they do add value because they are part of the community, right? Okay. They're very important. I'm curious who you're talking about now. Hilarious. I'm, I'm curious to know like what what kind of influencer are we describing without <sighs> getting too specific? Are we talking about like LA influencer like hey guys, I sure do love yeah weed, and uh, yeah yeah exactly where it's okay. just kind of like okay. it's like it, where it's just kind of like uh, it's like yeah this feels repetitive you know what I mean like I've okay. seen this piece of content a million Forever. times yeah you know what For I mean or I've seen uh, I've seen um, this version of a TikTok that isn't usually about weed, but it's about like something else, and you just made it now about sure. weed. You know what I mean? Where it's like that's fine, you know. But like, I don't know. I just I see people do like real cool things. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, like the 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 proxy shows, the art shows, uh, some of the sketches that I see people do in the weed space are really funny. Uh, there's okay. some cartoon guys that do stuff. It's just some like of the, who? Um, oh God damn it. <laughs> sent I might have just followed them the other day. I think so. Is it a? Uh, damn it! It's like they have like the uh, the Island Boys. Yes, hair. yes, yes, yes. The cartoon. One of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stuff like that's funny as fuck. Tag them in the comments if you know yeah, what I'm yeah, talking yeah. about. Um, I saw a video. I think Sarah yeah, was yeah, posted yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So stuff like that. It's like oh, okay, these are like people that are living this. They, you guys are living this. Mm. Where it definitely sometimes I see people and it's like oh, this is you were you were here for a short time to make money. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What are you fucking with in this space? Um, dude, I just, just I, I'm talking overall energy. It doesn't have to be like, well, this guy's weed or no, 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 no. I know, the thing that I love the most was when I went up to, um, when I went up to, oh god, it was that it was the, the punch was doing it. 
they sponsored it. Um, they were, or at least they were there. It was at the, uh, it was not the Emerald Cup. It was the Emerald oh Cup. Oh my God, were you there? So it was a raining Cezanne? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cezanne. Yeah, Cezanne. Stuff oh, like that, spot. where it's Ken like, Rosa. and I've done a few sessions at like other places. Like they had one, uh, like Jimmy's thing, uh, 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 Trans, Trans Bay, Bay Challenge. Yeah. Just those fun sessions, uh, even first smoke of the day when they had their big uh, party. Yep, I was there like too. Like those, those things where it's like, oh, that. this is fun. This is community. This is like people mm. hanging out. Like st- those big sessions. Like I mean, I know it's still just a group of people smoking weed, but I've always valued that and like cool experiences like that. Like this yeah. Barcelona trip is going to be ridiculous. You're coming? Yeah. Oh my god. No, oh, we're gonna talk there. after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this your first one? Yeah, first time. Oh man, yeah. You just roll with us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, whatever, as much as yeah. you want. Teddy's going as well. Mm, I think so. I you're think going so. to I'm have sure. a blast in Barcelona. Mm-hmm. Like the best food. Three hundred and fifty cannabis clubs. Yeah. Like how many cannabis clubs does LA have or or dispensaries? Is oh, it three fifty? Like, no, it is not. I think it's like maybe a hundred, hundred fifty. I mean, they have more cannabis clubs than LA does, and they're almost all consumption lounges. Mm-hmm. They're pretty much consumption lounges. And like the food is so great. And how long are you staying there for? I'm staying there from the seventh to the seventeenth. So I'm staying there for ten days. Okay. Yeah. So I'm staying there for the first half of or the like the Thursday before. Uh and then staying for Spanibus. And then after that I'm just gonna be doing Who are you stand-up. rolling with, if you could say? Uh Masonic. Uh, we're gonna be going out and then okay, um, cool. and then I have a friend who stays there, he's also a comic. Um and then I'm crashing with him too the last half. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah. And then we're just, so I'm just gonna be doing stand up and then hanging out. I don't really have a... You Any stand up there? Yeah, yeah. So they have a club out there, and then I'm just gonna do spots. So I'm gonna be bouncing around and doing sets and uh, partying again. Okay. Stuff. Oh man, we're gonna have to have Did some homies roll food? up to one of your sets. I mean, the food in Barcelona is—it's uh, fucked up to say. I mean, everybody has a perspective, but like the food in Barcelona is the best food options I have seen in any city I've been to in the world. Period. Like, I, and I've been to Rome. I haven't like really like traveled Italy, and I thought the food was really good. But when you go to Barcelona, man, like the the Italian food that they have there is like, to me, pretty much as good as the as I had in Rome. Again, okay. I'm sure somebody's out there being like, "You fucking idiot! You don't know anything." It's throwing stuff in the trash. But the, now. the food in Barcelona, man, is crazy. We'll give you like a long list of everything to check out, and we'll be hitting all of the fucking spots. Yeah. And- so that's the thing is like, whenever I travel, that's what I spend the most money on is just food. I'm not like, uh, oh, shit, I'm not going to bend down and get that. Yeah, you have uh, plenty more. Yeah, that's yeah. what happened with that one. I just yeah, left I it there. Like, ah. <laughs> that's, that, that, if that isn't over 30, you know, you're just like, I'm not going to pick it up. Yeah, Barcelona is going to be sick, man. It's, I, I see what you say you love about the space, and I love it, too. I don't get to enjoy it as much these days because, like, when I show up to events like that, I just become, like, the Puffco mascot, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, Where yeah. it's like... Yeah. I kind of know that feeling. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. I'm <laughs> You're the peanut guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, speaking of, let's, let's oh, jump into you know, I'm sorry. Oh, please, before we in. go, but what you said about the space was, uh, so when I do stand up and I go around and it's like when people approach me there, it's still fun. I still so excited to see like fans and people, you know, that are stoked. Um, Cause that's also the only place I really get recognized is like comedy clubs and shit. Sure. Right. Yep. Um, but when I go to weed spaces and someone's like, Hey, I know you were blah, blah. It's a little cooler. I don't know why it just feels mm. a little chiller where it's like, I don't feel like I have to be on. Like, I can truly just enjoy I know, I know that hanging feeling. out, getting stoned with someone. I know that feeling. It's happened very, very rarely for me. But it's when somebody outside of can't like somebody that doesn't pretty much just look like a wook or like they're living they're They showcase their love for cannabis as soon as you look at them, you know, when yeah. it's somebody who's like. No, man, you're that guy in any way. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. There's people that aren't out there looking all day that yeah. actually know what this is, but it's yeah, yeah. rare, very, yeah, yeah. very rare. Probably less rare than you in our space, but it's so much fun, man. Yeah, yeah let's, uh, I guess let's do one commercial break just so I can get through these, and then we're going to do the hash review with Frank. He's going to try these with me. Oh, a our... bunch of weed influencers just texted me. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Uh, be right back.
I do love your guys' setup. It's very ESPN-y. What, this whole thing? Like the, like the, 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 you just need something on the bar and on the bottom. You know what I mean? Like a ticker that runs across. Yeah, it's right. hilarious. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty positive about this one. So, um, so Ben is in the background somewhere. Ben knows. Ben knows what it is. I I feel like it's uh I mean I say trop cookies often because I know when I say trop cookies I probably usually even mean mimosa more than trop cookies. Mimosa. But this is what this looks like. Yeah, this is the hash cam. Oh man, that's so nice. Yeah, you know, just oh, giving people whoa, a nice beautiful that's view. That's beautiful. I mean, this is very pretty, very uh, fragrant. Ugh, I'm fucking with so this. Nice. Yeah, so nice. here, take take first dips, bud. Get in there. Let us know what you think. Frank is also a connoisseur. Uh, there have been some garlic cocktails that I've liked, Stas. Some. Garlic? like Garlic cocktail, like uh, the strain. Oh, okay. All right, let's see. I mean, this is looking pretty good. <clears throat> I think I know who this is by looking at it. Oh, do we fire? Can I fire? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. no, jump in. I don't know if there was like a, we got to like do a thing. No, I don't know. Mm. I'm just like enjoying it, appreciating it. I have one. They love seeing the droplet get really? used. They love seeing the droplet Oh, damn it. Right. Wait, this isn't inappropriate, right? No, not at all. Can you hold this? Yeah. I use this a lot, sorry. I use this a lot. Sorry. Oops. Well, I always feel like I always feel weird when I have like a dirty thing. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, ah, I use this a lot. What's your go-to temp on everything? Usually red, but I went. Oh, I was inhaling it too early. I was like, what am I doing wrong? Um, usually red, but on stream I've been on green these days. You're a fucking Easter egg boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once I saw you do it, I was like, what? And then, yeah. I can't. I get all the vapor I need at lower temps without coughing my fucking brains out. I'd be dying if I did that. <laughs> like a good cough gets people going. <laughs> this key, this gives me stamina. I could stay in the game with this. <laughs> it's tasty. I love it. This is perfect. We also weren't allowed to cough for a few years, so, you know, it feels good to finally be able to. Cough, you know, cough at each other yeah, completely. Yeah, yeah. Bring it back. <coughs> That's a smash for me. It looked good. It smelled good. And it tasted good. <coughs> I enjoyed that. <coughs> All right. Dab count. Nine. Boom. We're at nine? Yeah. I think we're What's at nine. What's the most? Uh, the most I've ever done was a 10 ski, really. We're going to blast right through that. Yeah, dude. I mean, we have at least four more dabs. Okay. All I'm right. That it. first one was... I recommend. Again, I think I know what brand this is. <laughs> is it all the same brand? Um, It should be. It should be three different things from a brand that's selling in the rec market available at a dispensary. So okay. people could just go and pick this up. I shouldn't be biased, even though I think I know who this is by looking at this hash, because these people historically have done really, really, really nice cold cures. Um, yeah, I feel like I, I feel like if I had to guess, I think I know who it is. <coughs> I mean, this one is just shining; like it's hard to even. I gotta like put put it away from the light. Oh right yeah, there. look, yeah. Mm, God. I mean, this looks really, really, really good. I'm fucking with it. Let's see what the smell is like. Okay, this is uh, this is more of a gassy, earthy. This smells. I don't know if this is like runts-ish. Here, what do you think? Oh, it's very piney. Cuts right in. Yeah, I have a feeling this one is going to make me sneeze. I do notice that the more I've dabbed, the more I've. Uh definitely like sneeze and have like a runnier nose 
Oh, I'm just, I'm blowing my nose constantly. I need to get, like, those tissues with, like, lotion or something in it. I'm also just, like, a, uh, yeah, just, uh, uh, my allergies whoop my ass. Yeah, me too. Wow, this smells really crazy. Oh, so, um, it was funny. I saw your clip about uh, proxy and flying. Um, yeah, fucking TSA. So, I take mine. Replied I and, take mine yeah. every, oh, wait, did they reply? TSA posted on their story we heard this post is making its rounds again and then tagged me in the background so i could repost their fucking social media manager is so sick yeah like, so i yeah. actually i i brought mine to hawaii and i actually got stopped and uh, no yeah, yeah, hold on let me let me do this i'll okay, do this dab for dramatic effect that's crazy i mean hawaii I, I assume would be very easy to travel to On Easter egg mode. I mean, that's a tough one. I'll All be right. dabbing while you tell the story. <coughs> so, <coughs> when I was, um, <coughs> it was me and my wife's whole family. I had my puff go. It was the end of the trip. We're flying back to California and we're going through it. And it goes through the like x ray machine. And uh, I had it in its case, which was all black. So, I think that's the thing that kind of gave it away. Um, so, he pulls it out and he opens it and he looks at it. And then he looks Wait, at me. What are we talking about? We're talking about a, a peak? A Puffco peak. So okay. it was the big, the, the case that it comes with, right? The styrofoam one? Yep. And um, he looks at it and he's like, what is this? And I look at him and I go, it's a, it's a humidifier. It's for my chronic lung condition. And the guy looks at it and he goes, oh, okay. And then just closes it and gives it. And my wife's dad's just staring at me and his fucking jaws just wide open. <laughs> He's like, no fucking way. <laughs> and so I just tell people it's a medical device. But it's like a humidifier and blah, blah, You don't blah. have to. Yeah, but I just make sure I just make sure it's clean. I mean, if you're in Texas, like, I'd be careful because I'd want, again, no chance that they're like, well. I don't bring shit to Texas, dog. But, yeah, I mean, TSA has made it clear we don't give a fuck. If there's no drugs in there, we don't care. We're not asking. And yeah. like my experience at TSA, the only time I can think of that it's been pulled and I've been asked about it, ironically, was before it ever existed. Mm -hmm. I We just announced it. We announced it at CES. I'm being called back because we got fucking voted for Engadget Best of CES. Nice. We didn't even have a fucking booth there. Like, we just, like, posted up at the press junket and hacked the fuck out of it. So, at this point, I'm in Oregon and, like, Southern Oregon. We were working, like, with a customer service center there that we moved on from later on. And I get the call, like, can you fly back to Vegas? We're fucking up for this award against, like, Dell and other major names. And so I have two of these things on me. There's two prototypes or one prototype, I forget exactly how many it was, in the world. And I have it on me in that moment. I know that like, I don't even know if one of them worked. Like it was insane. As I'm going through like the Southern Oregon airport, it comes up on camera. She's like, doesn't even open it. She's like, hey, what is that? And I'm like, oh, it's a vaporizer. I'm in fucking Oregon. Like, I have no go to Vegas. I have nothing to hide. And he's like, oh, uh, I thought it was a breathalyzer. Okay. And like, that was the only engagement I've ever had. You have to carry it on. You can't yeah. check it in no, your no, bag. No, no, no. But I Isn't have Isn't that crazy? That's our line of defense. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, great. I mean, listen, you know, like fine. What is this? Don't worry about it. It, it for me, it flips it for me of like, are y'all cool with and I hope eventually they just let you travel with cannabis if you're mm -hmm. traveling from rec state to rec state and hopefully it's federally decriminalized. But like how much bet I'm yeah, more yeah. down with the TSA if it's like, 100%. oh, y'all are looking for guns. Yeah. They got motherfuckers out here like punching flight attendants because they asked them to put a mask on nicely. Yeah. yeah. Make they sure yeah. they don't have weapons on yeah, that yeah, fucking yeah. flight. Yeah. But I'm chill with my consumption device. I, it, fl it immediately flips it to like y'all are cool. All yeah, right, yeah, yeah. This is because I've had to travel a lot, with flying, and doing stand up. So like, I always try to. I always, hey, you know, I don't want to bring. I always bring weed because I don't want to smoke. You know, it's tough. That that like trying to find it's tough. But I remember, yeah, I whenever I'd look at whoever's working TSA, I'd always just like I'd real be I'd be real real judgy about like whether or not like they smoke weed. 
where I'm just like, if the, is this well, guy going to be cool? Yeah. Yeah. They can't. I believe that TSA agents, because they're federal agents, yeah, yeah. are not allowed to consume cannabis. So but like, even if they like, live in California. Or but something. it's also like, you can tell it was like, have you ever, or do you think you're going to be cool? Sure. You know, like, sure. So I always like, I always like try to like my best and I've been pretty good. No, but no one's ever really stopped me. I mean, they don't, again, if they like, they just really don't give a fuck. They're yeah. checking for weapons. They really are. They're checking for like maybe large amounts of money, I'm guessing. Like I've yeah. never really had that. It's like I'm not flying yeah. around with large amounts of money. I had a bunch of edibles once, like a lot of edibles. I literally had a suitcase full of edibles, chocolates, and they did not stop me. And I was like, they are not. What can they for- do? I mean, like, I, yeah. I feel like unless it says cannabis on it, I mean, what, what are they supposed to do? Yeah. And like, what are you supposed to do? Is there weed in here? Like, they're nice. It's chocolate. They yeah. literally do not, unless your shit is packed with some like crazy chemical agents or you're, you're, sm- you're fine. And I don't know. Again, not recommending that at all. Do not clip this, admin. Um, but yeah, it's. No. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Kidding. Like, listen, TSA, as soon as, as soon as TSA is there just for weapons. And all of us non-harmful drug users get to just travel and be ourselves. Yeah. You know I what's mean, worse than a drunk yeah, person? Thank God for them. Drunk person on a plane. A drunk person? On a plane. Oh, yeah. I mean, isn't that mo- <laughs> Yo. I know Kevin Puffco isn't watching this and I can't reference the video because there's so many videos. How could I be thinking of one? But Kevin knows the video I'm thinking about and I don't even want to reference it. But alcohol is crazy, dog. Like, alcohol is really a wild drug. And it's just everywhere. Like, you're going on a plane, want to get loaded up real bad before you're in a fucking tiny tube with a (laughs) hundred-something other people. I know that video. (laughs) Don't you, Admin? I know that fucking video. That's not... You know what's what's fucked up, Admin? That's not the one I was thinking of, and that's a fucked up one. Shake My Hand is a fucked up one. We got to dead it. I'll tell him after, but like... It's so funny. Yeah, drunk people are crazy. Oh, yeah, we have a hash review to do. I'm proper fucking high now. We moved on to 11 dabs, right? Yeah, we brought the record. There we go. Record broken. Oh, another one. This is another. I mean, I don't know. This shit is looking really good to me. Look at this. These have all been, I would say, spectacular looking. Really good smelling. I give this a quick whiff. I can't even tell this one. I I, I have no idea what to make of that. Like it it smells good, but it doesn't remind me of any one strain that I know. I get like tones of maybe papaya. It's just, it's just sweet. Tones yeah, of sweet. like maybe like a gelato or something. Uh, I have, I stole both of hot knives. Um, so I'm going to hit this one. We've had two. I just remember, I still have smashes. a set tonight. You have a set? T- I don't understand how you. Yeah, I can't communicate if I get really high. And I have no idea how you get high and then do a set. Like I get so awkward, I feel like I'd clam up immediately. Well, it de- definitely is like, well, it's also like I still have a, I, I know everything I'm going to say. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, but don't you like you lose your train of thought and then just stumble around? And but like, that's oh. good, too, because I also like I have such hardcore ADD that it's like when I lose my train mm. of thought, I have such fun anyways. Losing my train of thought, just it, for me, it just makes me feel like I'm more in the moment. Mm. You know what I mean? Okay, that's yeah. fair. I'm more willing to have fun and just be silly. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Like, what? so like. Yeah, and I've there's times where I've been way too high, but there's also been times where like especially the main room, uh like it's just all packed and busy and it's also like so it's just so like it's a big it's it's tougher than the OR. So there like I'll do a dab and then I'll go up on stage. I used to not, but I'll I'll just rip yeah. one and then go up. But Damn. it's just cuz it makes me feel just more just more relaxed. What's up with a fucking comedy event without... Oh, how are comedy events where people are drunk and not high? Or high and not drunk? So, it depends. If people... If everybody's ripped, people can be too high. And then it just... It's like there's definitely... It feels like a delay. But I feel like if you start it at the right time and do it in a scheduled fashion, like either everyone starts smoking at the the right time or like joints get handed out in the middle or like... People smoke as they want. 
It's a little easier. And I think <laughs> any show like that should be longer than 45 minutes because the attention span is <laughs> sure. a lot, lot smaller. Yeah, I think I've seen like at an Emerald's Cup, I forget what artist, but he fucking bombed that it's because everybody was just so high. They're just yeah, it was probably zombies. me. I've been in that This situation. fucking hash is <laughs> very weird. Like, I don't know if... I don't know if you were catching my face, but like I was kind of losing my mind with this. Don't don't put it on. <laughs> don't put it. Admin. Admin, this is not okay. Dude, come on, dude. It is so funny. Okay, we could play it. We can't clip this though, man. Admin, I'll tell you what. If I wasn't Jewish, like you'd be written up for recommending this. Thousand percent. Thousand percent, dog. Yeah, but it's also like I've met that guy before. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god drunk as hell <laughs> milf manor preview oh man okay oh okay yes this is great okay so i mean listen one this fucking video right here um <coughs> let me give a sec for this ha have these right video ha has this has this episode <coughs> gone we gotta like, get premium <coughs> has, we, we gotta get premium has this uh <coughs> has this episode has this episode gone like the others or is this a little this one yeah I mean, I think I'm normally not hanging out with somebody this long. Um, yeah, that's fun. I don't know. All right, so I'm glad I'm glad I disrupted the status quo. You <laughs> definitely did, most definitely. I want to see it. <laughs> so, like, all right, this video one for me is like a, a <laughs> Jewish person ethnically. This is very <laughs> tough to see, man, because like some people just get really, really weird around Jewish people. This is an example of that, and also an example. Wait, who's Jewish? The guy asking me to get his hand shook? No, well, the guy not the guy walking back in fear. Watch, watch this video. Oh, okay. Is it might is it going to be very clear who's? Yeah, I'm gonna. I gotta fast forward. So this dude right there is like. I yeah, he's not Jewish. He's weird. No, but he's like, I want to shake oh, your hand. Oh, let me shake your hand. I thought he was yelling at he's a like, guy sitting down. I mean, like, and look at this poor fucking couple, man. They're <laughs> yeah. frightened. So, like, well, it's definitely like I, I see the humor in this. Absolutely. Like, I've <laughs> laughed at this video before. This guy is psychotic. But, like, again, also, you know, I don't know, man. Psychotic. <laughs> yeah, Jesus man. Christ. I'm glad everyone was able to stand up for him. I mean, definitely people came in and protected it, but like just the fear of his wife yeah. and shit. She was like, "What's about to happen to me? Why is this guy singling us out?" Saying, yeah. "I want to shake your hand." I mean, anyways, thanks for the fucking bummer, admin. <laughs> L admin, L admin. What a way to completely derail the energy of the stream. Please drop an L in the chat for admin. Do me a favor. All right, all right, all right. Let's see if Milf Manor can bring it back. It. It would let okay let's do a clip it we're not clipping it yeah it changes it right if it was just like a person that didn't look like any one group it would be weird but yeah, thank <laughs> yeah you. Thank, it was very specific thank you guys for standing yeah, by me with the L bad. admin do better you got to do the work admin you got to do the work we'll have a training course after this <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna work through it together let me get carried involved all right here we go this is this is milf manor okay YouTube videos not okay YouTube videos volume, volume. oh whoops. <laughs> Okay. I want to get a chance to do me a little. Young men have much more energy. They oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this is insane. I am in this amazing, beautiful. Kevin is. Here in Mexico. This is a Kevin is almost definitely watching this. It's the Learning Channel. Yeah, this is the Learning Channel. If you're if you're tuning in from another country, in USA. This is. This is the learning channel. This is the worst, dog. <laughs> it's so bad. I feel, I feel awkward watching this, honestly. I hate younger men. Okay, here come the chads. I mean, God. What the hell? It just got real. <laughs> Shit just got real. Wow. Oh my god. Wow. This is where we're at in society. Let's, let's explore like Ugh. what are what are other I mean I don't know. Like, you don't want to go down this road. It, it, what what are the other you it's know It's terrible, dog. TLC shows. TLC 
I want people outside of the country to learn what. Go, all right, go to thelearningchannel.com and see what's their okay. like main schedule. Okay. Because that's gonna be, DLC and I already know it's gonna be bad. Cable channel. My name's Kyle. So <laughs> is this gonna get taken down from? Am I not allowed to do this? I don't know. Who knows? Who cares? Whatever. We're figuring it out. All right, TLC.com. This is the fucking again. If you're tuning in from outside of the United States. So this is the learning channel in USA. But also just imagine being like, you know, there's people who's like were immigrants who tell me stories of like the show that I watched was Friends and that taught me English. Like there's do you know how sad it is to think shows. there's people who like they're learning okay. English watching this? Here, these are the oh, oh my god. And the list gets worse and like I don't want to say worse and worse, but it just feels like they're capitalizing on a certain type of energy. I, I don't want to be the one to describe it, but like, okay. 90 day fiance don't make me describe way. it what is what is 90 day fiance oh 90 day fiance is like with that guy that was memed heavily so i guess this is people travel to somewhere else in the world and get married within 90 days so somebody else can get citizenship i'm guessing yo have you not heard about it? yeah it's it's terrible it's it's it's, okay. it's not it's not a feel good show okay so this is a show where uh, people in the United States go and I guess pawn off their citizenship and they made a show about it. There's like, like we have TV shows here in the U S of like life in prison, you lock these people up, you know, yeah, for, yeah, yeah. you know, first 48 yeah, free yeah. labor and your entertainment. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's, a lot of seasons, dog. Let's guys. You can you can tell a lot about a, a culture by their TV, dog. It's yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> There's you, we've all seen this. You know, I think this is the reason that we all call sodas sodies here in the United States. These are two sisters on a journey. I, I, I'm not sure what the journey is. Oh, okay. Um, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If it makes you uncomfortable to talk about it, I gotta move the fuck on. Cause like, I have a much higher threshold than you do. So, okay, we're just gonna move right on. Well, cause all you're doing is you're just talking about how ridiculous it is, and my head is. I, this is the learning channel. Yeah, dude, it is. I this mean, is us. This is us. It, is... It, it, it is something to say about like, yo, we what we do as Americans is ridiculous in the sense of like, yo, we made like Honey Boo Boo popular. You know what I mean? I mean, and we we we, are, we exploited a full family oh, for our entertainment. Many. This is this, and is, it's not the first time we've done that. It happens, yeah, all, every day. That's just like what I mean. What was it? Wait, Kate and Kate and whatever the fuck plus eight. Yeah, K, there was K plus eight. That their, was the their thing. life got ruined. Oh, I mean, it it has to keep going back, man. Like, what about child actors from back in the day and shit? I mean, like it's, yeah, dog, you were there when. Remember, were, were you there when Corey Feldman was in the back at the store? Uh, I, I you were no, there. I, I wasn't there when he was there. You were there one time where a child actor walked back, and I remember pointing, and I was just like, "That's oh, a child actor," and, and you were just like, "No way." It was it like you or someone else? But I was just like, "Could have been yeah, me." Yeah, child time, actors. I they, I mean. Especially back in that day, like a lot of them are coming out now talking about how crazy it was. Like it was not easy for them. It was no, terrible, like, dog. I mean, do you think that we've reached? You've seen the movie Idiocracy, right? Like, mm -hmm. are we there? I don't know if we're there, but I mean, it's not fully there. Weird. But like, look at our TV, dude. I mean, that's not we're damn close, dog. That's not better than like a dude getting. If you haven't seen Idiocracy, it's like a very prophetic movie. Well, because the thing it. that always, and this is what blew my mind, and what it didn't dawn on me until I was much older, where it was like. I remember watching shows like Cops and being like, oh, this is crazy to watch, right? Because you were just like young and you didn't understand. But also like getting older and thinking like, imagine being in the middle yeah. of nowhere and you've never met any of these people. And you're watching a show where it's literally showing the worst just days of people's lives, right? Oh, yeah. And now it's like that's all you think about that group of people you know what i mean i mean it's yeah dude it's uh oh, it's and, and then you're just like we that's, are it's generations of people who just go through watching that like i remember like i remember going on tour with uh Polly shore and going somewhere and getting off stage and someone being like you're the first mexican i've ever seen do stand up and i was like that's crazy and i was like i understand that i've seen that i've heard that before and he was okay. like no you're like the first mexican i've ever Damn. met that's like you and i was like this conversation not getting any better. Like, this is only like getting, what the fuck? It's only, is, getting, yeah, this is only getting weirder, dog. And then he was just like, uh, he was like, I had no idea Mexicans could be so funny. And I was like, this is the craziest place I've ever been. I was like, where, where was the, this? It was in like fucking uh, uh, Hick, uh, North Carolina. Yo, North Carolina is frightening. And I feel like they, 
I mean, that dude just sounds like he didn't. He thought he was probably being nice to you. He oh, probably I mean, he was being super as, kind. And that's also the thing in my head was it was like this is this is this is him doing the best he can. And I was yeah. just like, you know what? I appreciate that. But it was definitely like a weird ass conversation. I was like, this is why they want us to take more dabs. All right, Ben, <laughs> get, get, Ben, get in here, Ben. Bring your proxy, please. We're gonna scrub away at these at these twenty. Okay. Where, um, did we already do help the last yourself one? to anything? Yeah, did we already here. do the last one. We did the last. Oh one. Oh my god. Here, yeah, that was a smash on all of them for me. By the way, we're bringing it back. Acting like they could cut this out into one thing, even though we don't. We don't cut this out. I know. It, um, it definitely. I knew those it, are all great. It was great to. <laughs> I could hear everyone laughing in the back, and I was like, "Oh, this is that's great." You got me. All right. Yeah. Great. Come in on camera. This counts. It's on camera. It's on camera. Fourteen. Get in there. Don't let that ring die. Boom. There's Ben. That's 14. That's 14. Okay. All right. What's the brand? Guess. I'm guessing it's the Frosties. It's not the Frosties. It's Kaya? Your other friends. It's Kaya. 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 I say Kaya. God damn. I have a friend this named Kaya. The... Whoa. This Please smells... don't clip that. It doesn't have that that <coughs> typical Kaya, uh, like, turf profile. I can that tell I by the color. Is. I can tell by the color. Do you know why? Why? Yeah, I like. I know my. Cool. I know some fucking like single source Kalia. Okay, all right. I mean, these were. Is it because all... I was wearing the shirt? It, it, it was like it felt right. Was I close on the crosses? <coughs> no, not really. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'm an idiot. What am I gonna do? <laughs> no. You got the fruity one first. You got the gassy. Okay, what do we got? What do we got? So the first one was Alienate, which is the Melonade Dosi Dose Cross. Okay, way off. I thought that smelled citrusy, but... It's watermelon, Skittles, and lemon tree. So there is citrus there. Um, yeah. But not orange. No, I smell mimosa. Yeah, no, there's no... I, there, this is... I mean, it's not a full mimosa, but this is great. What's the strain again? Alienade. Alienade. Fire. Fire, fire, fire. <laughs> Kalia, Alien Labs, that's a, a winning fucking combination right there. Uh, what's B? <laughs> what is it? Apollo forty one. Okay, is that a? No, nope. is that a? Is that a gelato? Gelato and yeah. So and I was right about that push one. Push. Yep. Well, I said runs, but like you know, whatever. Close, Close enough. Yeah. Okay, another great one, man. I'm. These seem very fresh too. Anyways, I'll get that at the end. Mm -hmm. What's up? <laughs> Let's see. C is Zerbaccio. Zerbaccio. So, Sherbaccio and Zeno number 12. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, this one was extra unique for me. So, that's, I think... Are we at 15? Was that number 15 that Frank took? I believe so. Okay. We're at 15. We're Set blazing through it. Frank needs some milk. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, so that's the I think. What's the price point? Is this, is this very expensive? Seventy three dollars pre tax. Yep. I mean, you know, PJ, it's the it? hype. It's it's good stuff. It's great. It's very yeah. good stuff. So yeah, Kalia, uh, Alien Labs. I would say for me, actually, it's a smash. What does that end up being? Taxes out the door. About a hundred bucks. Uh, yep. See, so if it was actually seventy three. It would be incredible. Yeah. It'd be like, yeah, 70, if this was $73, this would be such a hard smash. And like, I would ask you to go to the dispo and pick up a bunch for me right now. Yeah. It's a little bit tougher to swallow in the, you know, 90s and stuff. Find somebody um, with a, a first time patient discount. Yes. Try to find a first time patient discount. Try to, you know, I don't know. Talk to your dispo. See what they could do for you. But, um... This is all smash. Loved it. Loved it. I'm going to continue smoking it. It's going in my hash jar. My hash bag, rather. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> Did you just take another one? Was that 16? Wow. I mean, I, I just have to, like, sit back and do nothing. And I guess Frank is just going to fully, you know, smash all of these. Are you going in for another one, like, back to back? Oh, no, I'm cleaning this one. Okay, damn. I mean, I could try to take one more. 
I mean, I'm out of here at seven, no matter what's going on. But I'm, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to get one more in. I'm loving this um, Wook Sauce Winery Grape Gas. I'm oh yeah, Wook Sauce is great. You know, it's so funny. He was gonna come. Uh, he was gonna come to the store uh, one night, and he didn't. And I think that night, uh, I think Leslie popped in. I think like Bill was there. And oh, thanks for hooking her up. Yeah, Dave Leslie, popped in. Well, yeah. Leslie fucks with us. Yeah, Dave who? Trell. He popped into the store. Yeah, he's been popping in. Damn. Yeah, he's been around. There've been a few people coming back. Mulaney yeah. was there. I think a couple weeks ago. Dude, I wish I wasn't so fucking far away from the store. I know. It's like Forty minutes. I know. Ah. Uh, and it's always so random yeah. too because it's like you don't know when people are gonna be there. It's just it yeah. just randomly sh- and that's kind of the beauty of it. And it's also the terrible part of it. Yeah, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. All right. So Still fun. Is... 17. Grant, you want to take one on camera? Do you want to take one? <laughs> Forget. Yep. Whoa. I mean, who else is out there, admin? Oh, uh, that's the Moonbo from Trichedelics. Do you fuck with Trichedelics? Have you gotten a shit before? I have. I have. I've met him, I think, uh, I think once, but I think I was dressed Tri- as the old man. Trike is, I mean. I just cussed this so hard. I'm so sorry. No, no. It's okay. I'm so sorry. I'm terrible. <laughs> Don't be. A jar is going to get fully smashed. Um, he kills it. One of my favorite hash makers. He's become a great homie over time, too. He's going to be with us in um, Barcelona. Nice. All the homies are coming through. <laughs> Yeah, I'm out. I'm so, I'm so excited. <laughs> I, last time I did a trip like this, I went to Japan to do stand up, and that was um, that was pretty wild. Are you performing for like an audience that speaks English there? Like, is I fucking locals? hope so. Uh, no, no, no I, like I think it's expats. It's always a good mix. So I've noticed when you go to places like uh, that, like Japan or like you know not America, um, and it's like a scene that speaks a different language or like you know it's bilingual. Um, a lot of the expats will come and they'll bring their friends that are also bilingual. Um, so and it usually sells out because those people like it's their only entertainment that okay. they can go and see like an event. So like when I went sure. to Japan, like Neil popped in and did a set because he just happened to be in, the, in Japan. And he sick. sold that out, which was sick. And then um, the next show we did uh, sold out because it was just like everyone was there. Um, I mean, let me fucking promote your next event. I, yeah, I'm gonna find out when uh, when it's in all Barcelona. going out. Yeah, all the homies will be there. So. Yeah. Like, It'd I'm be trying cool to if see just if, like twenty or thirty of us just roll yeah, up to see. And you. I think all these places are only going to be like seventy-five. They're small. It's literally like in like a cool like underground venue, and they just so it's going to be sick. But I want to see if they'll let me have my own night, and then I'll just do like a just a longer set. I mean, get people. some people in here. That'd be sick. Dab. That'd be sick. To, Let's close this fucking out. Let's just close this, this out. This feels very uh, NPR. You know what I mean? Like uh, tiny. This desk. feels NPR. Tiny desk. You know what I mean? How so? In a very like if like just the set, it feels very cool. I like what this is. Okay. Not thank NPR you. in like a bad way, but like a no, t- no, no. like I, tiny desk. Yeah. Tiny desk yeah. is cool. I fucks yeah, with yeah. it. Let's get let's get some people in here, admin. Admin reveal at hundred K subs. Are you taking one, Grant? Yeah. Oh. I didn't want to die on it. Ooh. Back is crack hash PR. Okay, here's here's the man. You, you yeah. want to take a dab? Yeah. We can have this meeting afterwards. Oh, God. I'm going to be so high. Um, right, do you have a piece? I don't. Uh, okay, here. I'll let you hit this. Now you're going to be all high for the meeting. Well, <coughs> you both are going to forget. Oh, well, just then it becomes like, <coughs> it's bad enough when I'm high. When someone else is high, it's an endless conversation. <coughs> We're going to do I'm gonna keep it quick, but uh, all right. how many is that? That's that's that's. We do okay. look like a very cool new age band. Okay. You know what I mean, I mean, yes, you can be the last one, literally. Beautiful. Oh, and you brought your own piece. Great. What's our band name? We're growing by the minute, by the dab. Five oh, piece. Could actually be in the band. Definitely go, like. So is, is it two guitarists song. or two lead singers? No, I'm just kidding. I should have played. Can I play all the commercials too? All right. 
More mat, pop her off mat. And we're out of here. This is like a countdown. I'm just doing my best. You guys got your dub ski. It's never going to be me. I'm never going to be the one to deliver. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We didn't do the double Puffco. Oh, you want to go even higher. That it, is God. the official It's up to you. Okay. I mean, you have two right there. All right. Nobody's done it with a droplet yet. So that's a different right. thing. I mean, I would recommend actually that you probably put it in a dry. Because they're going to hit differently. You're right. Sure. Well, you know what? We'll wait. We'll, you know, no, let's, let's run it. Let's, all, right, all right. Yeah, let's fucking do it. I got a piece right here. These are both ready for you. Beautiful. Thank you, guys. Yep, I got it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. I'll see you in a minute. I'm closing this out right after Frank's thing. We'll be quick. Yes, thank you. All right. Final moment with Frank. <laughs> what are you going to put it on? Are you going to Easter egg both of them? No, I'm going to green. I'm going to green light both. Get that. You get a green light both of them. That's, not, that's not what that's not what uh, the, what little did, MacBook did. What? It, wow, who's little MacBook? Little, little MacBook is I, the guy. Thanks, Matt. Um, he's I the guy. Not, I don't know the guy. Who, little MacBook. He's the guy who did it. He did it, and then Ted named it. Ted from Alien Labs oh, named hilarious. it the Walrus. The Walrus. That's so funny. I mean, okay, you're doing it. You're going on green. That's yeah. reasonable. That's a reasonable thing to do. <laughs> That's a reasonable thing. I mean, it's on green. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, the vapor is looking pretty crazy in here. <laughs> He's no little MacBook. He can't handle it. <laughs> walrus challenge <laughs> failed you are not the walrus my friend you are not you're just a baby seal i'm a baby dolphin dog you're a baby dolphin yeah yeah uh he has water he has water uh, nearby I'm just... it's tough this is a tough thing to do i'm judging because i would not do that i would have an equal reaction to frank but no we're gonna get frank and uber home <laughs> Nobody's nobody's driving out of here. All right, I think I I'm think spending the night. That's it, right? I have what is it? Is three? I have. How about this? You want to stick around? I got stick around Ooh. for another clip of Frank. We have another segment, and I'll come back and I'll say, I'll say bye after. We'll say goodbye <laughs> in a second. But check out this this Frank segment. Beer B. Hello, it's Officer Badger here. Yeah, Puffcon. Here to write up all the rule breakers. Sorry, do you guys have a permit for this? Might have to write you up for reckless inhaling then. No cap on leash either? Oh, yeah, yeah. Dirty glassers. All right, that is. I'm gonna have to write you at least three tickets. The mid smokers. What are you smoking though? Ah, uh, sounds like mids to me. All right, all right, I'll let that slide. Has he been sharing the za? No, he hasn't? Does anyone have a cup? People with canoe joints. You've never seen them roll? Sounds like a shitty joint roller. I gotta write you up a ticket for being my doppelganger, dog. I'm here to give some free shit away. You know what I mean? Give back to the community. I have a travel glass. Just want to show them what it is. I'm gonna write you up for a Chaz Bowl. Oh, sorry, no gang signs, dog. Okay. I'm gonna let it slide this time, all right, dog? No problem. That's a nice hat, dog. That guy that walked away very, very fast earlier missed the fuck out, didn't he? At ease, sir. Do I brought? No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, don't give cops hugs, but you know what I mean. You should. At ease. Ah, uh, oh, that was so much. Oh, okay. And after this, I'll probably quit my job. That is it. That is everything. Officer Badger signing out. Here, I got one more one more thing for you. I don't know what this is. 3D reacts. Did I play that already? Here, maybe there's one more thing. Hold on. <laughs> That's incredible. Puff go to the moon. 
That's beautiful. It tastes a lot more flavor on that one. Heats up a lot quicker. You get more taste out of your dab. You get like you taste the terps for sure a lot better. You get to taste it a lot better. I feel like after maybe like two or three of these, I'll be done for. Sheesh. Definitely can rip it now. I love it. Ooh -wee. Damn. It's 3D chamber boy. Man. All right, that's enough commercial for everybody. Um, all right, we're out. Peace. Got no more. We're turning it down. Five five skis going to be the regular limit. Also, I'm gone, by the way. This is the last stream for uh, a few weeks. Like, next week at some point, I'm doing the Euro Tour, and I will have Stone with me. So we're going to be doing some type of content. Um, I'll be recording some of it, and... I won't be on here. But I don't know. Can we set up a stream yeah, while I travel? Still, yeah, you can I still got, do it. I got the bubble set if we want to run it. Yeah, dude, run it, dog. Yeah, I mean, I guess we could do it at the end of the day, but by the end of the day, I'm going to be like full and... It's true. We, we, Perfect. You do 30 minutes. Just give him something. Get a successful wallet could we... from uh, Frank and a fucking country. I mean, we could set up somewhere. Maybe I'll stream from like gray area in Amsterdam. True. Yeah, we... I, I've got the full mobile. All right, we'll see. I, I might, y'all have to show up, you know, like I don't want to do this shit for just a few heads, but I'll, I'll come through. Yeah, maybe I could set up like a stream in Amsterdam on the street, not on the street, but like pretty much on the street in a club showing you different types of hash. Yeah, let's fucking do that. That's a great thing. All right, stream. Also, we're chat. Where the fuck am I supposed to call you? I'm You're so man. high. I love it. Bye. What is your definition of happiness? A clear horizon, nothing to worry about, only things that are creative.